something about a train going by, a train run by people and carrying people, that has a strong appeal, not only for small boys like Johnny, but for all of us. Just about everybody likes to watch trains roar by and travel with them in imagination. Johnny doesn't know it, but a great deal of coordinated effort went into serving the passengers before they boarded this train. This farmer is making a trip to the west. His local agent made a sleeping car reservation for him through the Chicago Reservation Bureau. This businessman from an eastern city had his reservation made at the city ticket office. And this young couple, hmm, at the suggestion of a passenger traffic representative at the city ticket office, these honeymooners are going to Seattle with a stopover in Yellowstone Park. All of their sleeping car and hotel reservations were arranged in advance. Johnny doesn't realize that public appreciation of these services not only creates passenger revenue, but increases freight earnings as well. He does, however, like to watch the trains go by. For there is also a strong appeal in long freight trains, pulling so many cars loaded with merchandise or with farm produce or livestock. And there are many reasons for that appeal, for railroads affect our lives far more than we realize. The Milwaukee Road brought in materials, equipment, supplies, and people to help build the town where Johnny lives. And the road continues helping the area to grow in population and wealth. Representatives of the Agricultural and Mineral Development Department discuss problems with farmers in the area, counseling with them about livestock, advising them on soil conservation, markets and shipping, and helping them make the most efficient use of their lands. Geologists connected with the department aid in the development of the mineral resources in various sections of the 12 states through which the road operates. All of those services affect Johnny's life and the lives of many millions of people along the railroad. His bicycle was shipped to town over the Milwaukee Road. But that story began more than a year ago and several hundred miles away. When a representative of the Rhodes Industrial Department called on a manufacturer who was interested in finding a site for a new plant. How do you do, Mr. Jadison? Colbert's my name. Oh, yes. You're from the Milwaukee Road. That's right. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Colbert. Have a chair. Thank you. Well? Have you found a site that you think will answer our needs? Yes, I think so. There are a number of sites available, Mr. Janison. I brought along some maps to show you the exact location. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what we had in mind for you particularly. Well, this plot right here, right along the main line, if you will notice. Colbert described the parcels of land in detail and explained the availability of power supply, water, materials and manpower in the area. Later on, he talked it over with the general agent of the Milwaukee Roads Freight Traffic Department. So, Jim, that's the site the Jamison Products Company has chosen. It's right on our main line. Fine, Joe. I'll make an appointment with them right away to go over the traffic features and check into their sources of supply and distribution areas. Uh, Jamison gave me the name of their contractor. Yes, here it is, Jim. I'll get in touch with him and try to get the construction material routed our way. And I'll want to learn about the kind of power and heating they'll use. Then we'll be able to suggest the sources of fuel supply that are on our line. I told Jennison some of the advantages our road can offer, but of course I left most of that for you. Okay, Joe, I'll give him a thorough explanation of the road's facilities and show him how we can serve his interests. Within a few months, the site was purchased from its owners. The new plant erected and track laid from the main line all as a result of the services given by the industrial and traffic departments. Manufacturing was begun and in due time the first shipment of merchandise was put into a Milwaukee road train and sped to its destination. In one of those cars was Johnny's bicycle, a milestone in his young life. But there is much more to the story. For shipments of freight required main track and cars with engines to pull them. 
For nearly a century, the Milwaukee Road has been laying and maintaining track. Here, from a foreman's track motor car, we see a maintenance crew at work. These men are removing old ballast, which has become muddy and is no longer suitable. As part of maintenance, worn out ties are replaced with new, treated hardwood ties. Engineers from the safety department continually check working conditions and teach workmen and supervisors safe practices as a means of preventing injury to employees. Here we see the unloading of new ballast from specially designed cars, which distribute it evenly between the rails and outside the rails as required. A power jack is used to raise the track, so new ballast can be tamped under the ties. Special power machines tamp the new ballast solidly, and after it is leveled in the center of the track, a power dressing machine is used to shape the shoulders, leaving a clean, smooth roadbed. The work of maintenance requires many thousands of skilled and competent employees to keep the track in top condition over nearly 16,000 miles of main line and sidings. The work of other thousands is required to keep the traffic moving. At the freight houses, less than carload lots are loaded in station order. Shipments must be handled carefully and properly stowed to save loading space and to expedite unloading at other freight houses and route. Car inspectors carefully check loads to make sure that shipments are properly secured. Inspectors from the claim prevention and refrigeration department make sure that cars are properly iced or otherwise protected against hot or extremely cold weather. At a large freight house, bills of lading for LCL collect shipments are photostatted, making it possible for the bill of lading to move with the shipment instead of a way bill. A way bill goes through many hands, including the receiving clerk, route clerk, check clerk, agent's office, rate clerk, revising clerk, counter clerk, chief bill clerk, auditor, and sometimes others, depending on the nature of the shipment. After the cars are loaded, they are made up into merchandise trains for outbound movement, directly from the freight house. Other trains, such as time freights or dispatch freights, are made up at the freight yards. Loaded cars brought in by transfer runs from other lines or from distant cities, and cars loaded by local shippers are combined into trains for outbound movement. They will be hauled by one of these giants being readied at the roundhouse, where the roundhouse foreman knows the class of engine required for each train and when it will be needed. He and the boiler foreman make a final check of available power and select an engine that can be serviced and made ready for an on-time departure. The locomotive is fired up then moved out of the roundhouse to a turntable to be directed to the proper track for final servicing. This includes taking on coal and water. The engineer and fireman climb aboard and head for the train yards. Meanwhile, at the yardmaster's office, the conductor signs the register, checks his watch, and gets his orders and way bills. Later, he checks watches with the engineer and gives him a copy of the orders which the engineer reads back to him. The engineer then hands the orders to the fireman to read while the conductor walks back to the caboose. And this train is on its way. The conductor will check his orders with the brakeman, then put his way bills in order as the train rolls out to the main line, taking products and materials to people those millions of people whose lives are interwoven with the services given by railroads. Up at the head end, the engineer watches the signals, give him a clear track, and all along the line, other employees are doing their jobs. Among these are the signal maintainers, who make sure all automatic signals are operating properly. The dispatchers who direct train movements record them on train sheets and keep the traffic flowing on schedule. 
and there are the telegraph and telephone operators who forward information on train movements. All of these are helping to keep the trains moving safely and on time. On sections of the line, operators at centralized traffic control boards direct traffic up to 100 miles away. And from the changing lights, know the location and movement of all trains within their sections. Johnny knows a little about how trains are kept going, for he operates his own line in a small way, and he knows that equipment and maintenance are required to keep any railroad in operation. Perhaps as he fixes a part of his toy train, he visualizes similar activities on a grown-up railroad. If he does, might see the Milwaukee shops, largest of several that the road has built in a number of cities where new passenger and freight cars are built, engines repaired and rebuilt, equipment and material maintained and reclaimed. Here, as well as everywhere on the railroad, the safety department, with its staff of safety engineers, is continually promoting safe practices and devices to prevent injury to employees. Here are large foundries where tons of metal are melted down. From giant bull ladles, the molten fluid is poured into pouring ladles, from which the skilled foundry men pour it into molds to produce car wheels and other parts for cars and engines. There are machine shops where huge pieces are fashioned into parts that fit perfectly. In the erecting shop, the boilers and machinery of the locomotives are repaired or rebuilt. When completed, the engine is moved out onto a transfer table and taken to a track leading to the roundhouse. Here at the roundhouse, Locomotives are continually being serviced, given routine light repairs or heavy classified repairs, which are essentially a complete overhauling. There are blacksmith shops where huge parts are heated in forging furnaces, then placed under steam hammers to be roughly formed before final machining. These parts are used for engine and car repairs. Maintenance of freight cars is also continually in operation, either at the shops or on repair tracks in several sections of the country. Repairs made by people whose careful work results in better operation of the road. The Milwaukee Road builds its own cars, thousands of them, of all types, box cars, gondolas, passenger cars, mail cars, diners, beaver tails, and special equipment such as snow plows and snow cup wideners. Our friend Johnny would like to come here and see a freight car being built. He'd see the main sill brought in. This is the backbone of the underframe. He'd see the huge underframe turned over, ready for mounting on the trucks. He'd see the trucks lowered into place and the underframe lowered onto them. Then the welding of the underframe, the sides and ends moved into position. And finally, the new cars coming out at the rate of one every hour or less, sometimes 90 or more cars a week. Possibly he realizes something of all this as he waves to train crews for he knows that somewhere these trains are built and maintained. But he can't visualize the enormity of the work or know the requirements for the purchase and storing of thousands of parts. The purchasing and stores department of the Milwaukee Road sometimes spends $50 million in one year for more than 80,000 items. Many of these parts are held only as safeguards against any emergency or unusual condition. Others are used frequently. Still others are bought for improvement purposes. With so large a stock, careful planning and handling are necessary to avoid loss or waste. From 40 to 50,000 carloads of material are moved each year through storehouses located in 33 towns. 
the main stock of locomotive tires for the entire railroad and the main stock of car wheels are maintained here at Milwaukee. In the lumber yard, an average of more than five million feet of lumber is unit piled for fast handling, and this is duplicated at many other points. Each year, approximately two and one half million ties are purchased, given preservative treatment, and distributed to take care of necessary renewals. The store's department has charge of the purchase, storing, and movement of coal, and many other operations in yards over the entire line. Over four million dollars are spent each year for lubricating oils and fuel oils, which require special handling for protection against fire, leakage, and low temperatures. At this enormous Milwaukee plant, and in several other smaller plants, the work of building and maintaining equipment goes on endlessly. So trains will run on schedule, and the road can serve the needs of millions of people. Johnny doesn't know that the Milwaukee Road helps to pay for his education by payment of taxes used for maintenance of schools and for other useful purposes in the territory served. But he does know that there are such things as addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. And while he works on how much A should pay to B, the Milwaukee Road is busy on somewhat larger problems of accounting and finance. The Department of Accounting and Finance employs about 1,500 people and occupies a six-story office building plus the office of the controller in the Chicago Union Station. It receives reports from all over the system and accounts for expenditures for labor, materials, fuel, and supplies. These records are made by punching the information into cards on key punch machines, which also prepare the base data for payrolls. Other machine installations are used for the accounting of freight and passenger revenue. The punched cards are fed into accounting machines, which prepare summary reports and detailed lists. These machines also produce the payrolls from the cards previously punched and automatically make deductions for such items as income tax, railroad retirement tax, board, watches, and so on. Still another machine is busy turning out paychecks, thousands upon thousands of them, complete with name and all other pertinent information. In the office of the freight auditor, and the auditor of passenger accounts, records of freight and passenger revenues are kept and interline settlements made for the railroad's portion of the revenue earned for service rendered. And in another office, car records are maintained from daily reports, making it possible to know at all times where cars are located and when cars are received from or delivered to connecting lines. Reports are received by the transportation department from the chief dispatchers of each division so that cars of the right kind may be made available at the right places to take care of the shipping needs of the railroad's customers. It is known when these cars will again be available to shippers and the transportation department will arrange to have them where they are needed, ready for loading at the proper time. The location of passenger cars and their availability for regular and special trains is also known. This train carrying mail, baggage, express, and people is now in the Northwest on the electrified line. Passengers look out over fabulous scenes of mountains, of extravagant colors coming brightly through the thin, clear atmosphere. Some will stop off at Gallatin Gateway for a vacation in Yellowstone Park, this most famous of American resorts. Meanwhile, this honeymooning couple have been enjoying every moment of their trip. The clean, crisp linens, the excellent food on the diner, and the courteous service. They may wonder how these services are accomplished, perhaps not right at this moment, but they'll remember when the trip is over. Part of the answer would be found at the commissary in Chicago, where about 100 tons of meat and poultry and 1,500 cases of eggs are provided for the diners every month. The Milwaukee Road serves nearly two and one half million meals each year. The service of these meals 
requires clean, fresh linens, and the road's own laundry provides them. Here are three of the largest washers in existence, modern and electrically operated. And ironing is also a large-scale mechanical operation, for all linens must be ready for outgoing trains. Those clean white jackets worn by waiters and porters are pressed six at a time on these steam presses. And that's only part of the job of getting the trains ready for the comfort and convenience of passengers. In the coach yard, the cars are thoroughly cleaned inside and out, and diners are stocked with the finest of food. On trains such as the Olympian, it's up to Milwaukee Road employees to see to it that passengers are provided with every comfort. This is equally true on the Pioneer Limited and on all Milwaukee Road trains. On the Hiawathas, for example, the comfort aid available through the commissary and laundry are continued through prompt, courteous service on the diner. The same type of service is available on the luxurious beaver tail cars. Appreciation of these comforts by businessmen frequently leads to freight revenue, for many of these men are shippers. Much business also results from employees of the road who send in traffic tip cards. Here's an interesting card, a tip when a large number of salesmen call to the general headquarters of their company located in the Twin Cities. Let's see what happens to it after it is received by a passenger traffic representative. All right. Thank you. And, Mr. Gregg, since we've learned your company is arranging a sales meeting with representatives of your various offices, I'm here to offer the services of the Milwaukee Road. I'm glad you stopped in. Just going over the plans of that meeting. Got any ideas? Yes, sir. Now, with the majority of your men coming from points east and south of Chicago, I would suggest that they all leave Chicago together on our afternoon Hiawatha. I know that you've used that train yourself and are familiar with it. Yes, good train. They give you good service. They certainly do. And it would allow your men to renew old acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about tickets and reservations? Oh, we can take care of that very nicely, Mr. Gregg. We'll arrange to meet your representatives and see that their tickets and reservations are all in order. All right. That would relieve me of a lot of detail. Uh, by the way, would you mind telling me how you learned about this meeting? Not at all, Mr. Gregg. You see, we have about 40,000 employees who are on the alert for new business. They uh, send in tip cards about passenger travel and freight business they hear about. Well, that's a great idea. I think I'll introduce that among our own people. And it is a great idea. Many tons of freight and thousands of passengers have been carried as a result of tip cards. And millions of dollars in revenue have been brought to the office of the treasurer, later to be disbursed in operating expenses and paychecks to employees. The thousands who work together, who are bound together in one effort to serve the public with better freight and passenger transportation. But many of these people, although they work together, have never met one another and do not know what sort of work the others do. There is, however, one more railroader who does know all of them and whose job it is to help bring them together. He is Mr. PR, which is short for Public Relations. This little fellow is responsible for keeping employees continually informed about what others are doing and what the road itself is doing. He issues press stories on matters of interest, supervises the tip card plan, provides speakers, and helps find entertainment for employee and public groups, cooperates with the Milwaukee Road Service Clubs in the preparation and conduct of their meetings. And he publishes the Milwaukee Magazine, which is sent to employees. He does his best to bring them together. For all the thousands employed by the Milwaukee Road are together, blending their efforts toward one result, that of building the road's reputation through courteous and expert performance of duties. For these people are the Milwaukee Road.
It is a railroad built by people and operated by people for the service of people. a junction between Union Pacific's Chester subdivision and the Mount Vernon subdivision. In the summer of 1993, photographer George Redmond visited Gorham and recorded the power from more than a dozen different railroads, including Union Pacific, Southern Pacific, and a host of others. 